That's yeah, it. you want to plug our shows? Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. You, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Downtown Brown is going on tour again, uh, we, uh, and we're doing some shows with TSOL and the yes. band Guttermouth, and we will be playing in Los Angeles at the Viper Room, the world famous oh. Viper Room, Sunset. Oh. I've heard of that place. Sunset Boulevard, West Hollywood. Oh, crazy, crazy. Yeah, and wow. we're playing there on the 7th with the band TSOL. Oh. And then we have a five day run with the band Guttermouth that starts on oh. the 11th in Reno. I have a feeling Nevada. they're, they're going to say a lot of bad words, Guttermouth. Yeah. Is gutter- that why they're named that? Yeah, Guttermouth. They're all just like, their lyrics are highly. Fuck. High. Their ly- lyrics are highly offensive, but oh. very tongue in cheek at the oh. same time. So th- somehow they gutter mouth hasn't gotten canceled, but no effects did. Oh, crazy! Well, but that's a whole different story. And if you want to see Ali Shula getting back on the comedy music wagon, um, you can come to the city of Burbank. What? And I am playing at the Park Bar and Grill. What's that? Um, it's an awesome little corner bar. That's like kind of near a bunch of neighborhoods. So they get a lot of like regular folk who just like hang. Um, Kendra's the bartender. She's super rad. She's always there. She like hosts. Like the bartender is also the host. Shouts out to Kendra. So, dude, sh- major shout out to Kendra. I love her. Shout out. Um, Shouts. But yeah, so if you find yourself in Burbank on Friday, the 6th of March, come to the Park Bar and Grill. It's five bucks. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And back to my plug, tickets are available for all of the <laughs> shows that we're doing. There's... there's five six there's seven total shows in march that downtown brown is doing all in support of either tsol or gutter mouth and you can find tickets for those on www.dtbmusic.com dtb d is in dog t is in tom b is in bill music.com yeah and, yeah and while we're plugging shit uh we're up to 184 dollars monthly on the patreon so check out patreon.com backslash neil p neil p if you want to support the show that you're currently listening to we greatly appreciate it your support hey what's up it's neil patterson i'm a guy and i'm back with a rant and i'm gonna rant a little bit this channel isn't necessarily a purely music based it's just a channel you know a guy and a microphone and a camera and i was thinking to myself i've been doing a lot of research lately i've been playing these guitar strings these right here these ernie ball slinkies 11 gauges i've been playing them for years and years and years and they're actually like kind of hard to bend uh, so i'm like all right i'm gonna go online and i'm gonna do a little research and i'm gonna see uh you know w- what's the deal like why have i been playing these 11 gauge guitar strings for so many years and i think what it comes down to is someone told me once they're like stevie ray vaughn played 11 gauge guitar strings or he played 12 gauge guitar strings i don't know why i thought this but in my head lighter gauge strings just were thinner that's a stevie ray vaughn effect there was also a dude in my high school named keith hey keith he was like yeah i play 11 gauge strings and i remember just thinking wow he's a great guitar player i mean i want to be like this guy i want to be a badass you know so i'm like all right stevie ray vaughn did it this guy keith that was in the jazz band did it i was also told somewhere along the lines that it the tone is better did I really do any research? No, I just started playing 11 gauge strings when I was in high school and it's 20 fucking years later and I'm still playing these 11 gauge 11 gauge strings and it's got me thinking a lot about why do we do things? We do stuff because other people say, yeah, that's the way to go. That's what you need to do. The tone is better, yada, yada, yada. It's come to my attention. Rick Beato did a string test and turns out that these nine gauge strings get better response and better tone, better mid range and better everything. And you can look at their videos if you really want to like go into the specifics of it, because I'm not going to do that. It's got me thinking, uh, is extreme always better? And why do we feel the need to go so hard? I think a lot of this had to do with my insecurity and not only as a guitar player but a human being if I play these 11 gauge strings and these other badass motherfuckers play these 11 gauge strings uh, regardless of whether or not it's comfortable for me I can tell other guitar players yeah I'll play 11 gauge strings I remember my brain telling other guitar players that and and being like yeah I play 11 gauge strings my dick is huge and it was really kind of silly when you think about it because the more research I'm doing on the subject matter, it turns out some of my favorite guitar players, virtuosos, play light gauge strings, which is insane. So I'm on this website, ultimateguitar.com, and it turns out 
Chuck Berry, Peter Frampton. I'm not really into Peter Frampton that much. Joe Satriani, I mean, shreds. Steve Vai shreds. These dudes all play nine gauge strings. Frank Zappa, one of my all time heroes. If you look back there, there's Zappa. Frank Zappa was also pretty obsessed by using lighter strings. While Ernie Ball had the signature Zappa strings that are 0.008 to 0.038, he even reportedly never went above 0.009. And that's what these are right here. These are nine gauge strings. Certain sources even mention gauges going as low as .007, Zappa. Well, knowing how weird and innovative he was, it wouldn't surprise us even one bit if he did in fact have .007s. Which gets me to thinking, and I'm thinking more about this, you know, and I'm currently restringing my guitar. I'm, I'm not gonna do a taste test on 11 versus nine. But that isn't what this video is about. Pretty much what this video is about is our need to take things to the extreme. Check it out, it's Stream Cheddar! <laughs> In 2017, I, t I did an extreme diet. I didn't do any research just like about the string gauges. I just heard from a bro that I thought had a good physique and he's a yoga bro. And, and the yoga bro told me, bro, he's like, if you really want to like lose fat, you're going to do this keto thing. And I just remember just based on purely on his recommendation, I switched my diet from a kind of a plant-based diet to a high fat, zero carb diet called the ketogenic diet. And it worked. You know, I lost 20 pounds. I lost 20 pounds fast. But I mean, I was carb depleted. I had zero carbohydrates in my diet. And I did that for, I, I adhered to that for like over a year. Turns out I went and got some tests done on my cholesterol and all my cholesterol was elevated. And not only that, there is a huge, huge, huge history of heart disease in my family. So it's like, okay, if you have heart disease and cardiovascular disease in your family, excuse me, should you go on a super fucking high fat, mostly fat diet, <clears throat> which is mostly animal product. If not only your father, but your dad's dad had massive heart attacks bef before the time they were in their fifties. You think that's a good idea? And when I went to the doctor, I'm like, well, I've been doing this ketogenic diet to lose weight, blah, blah, blah. He looks at me and he goes, do you think with your family's history of cardiovascular disease that you should do an extreme diet like the ketogenic diet, which is a high fat, zero carbohydrate diet? And uh, it got me thinking. I've always been that dude who gets a recommendation from someone I look up to, whether they have a nice physique or they shred on the fucking guitar. And I'm like, oh, well, that guy must know what he's talking about. So I am just going to blindly follow that shit. I've reached the age where I'm going to do a little bit of research uh, before I decide to do fucking extreme things. You don't have to go harder. You have to go smarter. And because we have this thing called the Internet, motherfuckers, we should just look up some facts you know, I should have looked up the ketogenic diet and been like, okay, side effects. You literally are consuming fat, like just tons of fat, animal products and vegetables and animal products and vegetables. This isn't enough, like a pro vegan thing. I eat meat sometimes. I'm not a fucking vegan, but all, all I had to say is like, in, instead of just going 11 gauge on the diet and 11 gauge on the training, I could have done a little bit of research. Maybe you don't need to go super extreme for everything. Check it out, it's Stream Cheddar! And, an and another point I'd like to bring up, y you know, you don't always have to go extreme with the fucking. I heard my neighbor having sex the other day and he, went, he was going fucking very hard. But you know, I had sex with my girlfriend this morning. We were, you know, we were fucking kind of hard for a little bit, but then at some point we slowed it down. And it was at that point where she reached the climax of the experience. And just saying, you don't have to play 11 gauge strings and you don't have to do extreme fucking diets that are gonna fuck your body up. And also you don't have to just like bang super fucking hard. You know, you can make love every once in a while. John Dunsworth, Mr. Leahy, may he rest in peace, gave me that advice, not only in life, but in the music and in the guitar strings and in everything. Let's just try to not fuck as hard. Maybe we can fuck smarter and fuck a little more subtly and we can come to a better conclusion. So yeah, I'm going to be putting nine gauge strings on my guitar and I'm going to be playing with finesse and fluidity instead of just the hard fucking. And I think all of us should consider in our lives to maybe not do shit super fucking hard and do it with a little bit of research and a little bit of finesse and a little bit of fluidity and a lot bit of love. And we may find better results or who knows maybe you just want to play 11 gauge strings and just like get carpal tunnel from just doing fucking hard crazy stevie ray Vaughan bends for the rest of your life so what do you want to do do you want to do a little finesse because i'm at the age where i'm gonna do a little finesse from here on out or do you want to just do the hard fucking life is about balance 
diets are about balance. Sex is about balance. Relationships are about balance. So let's try to balance this shit out. In 2020, I'm sweating. This is sort of a rant. I don't even know if this is going to be a video. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Guitar strings. Diet. Fucking. Do your fucking research. I like his little sweater. That's what uh, Brian, who was in my band, used to wear. In fact, what's funny is the guy in the background kind of looks like Brian a little bit. It's him at Guitar Center. Is that him at Guitar Center? It's Mark Marin at Guitar Center. I feel like Mark Marin wouldn't go to a Guitar Center. I feel like he's at a Guitar Center right there. Uh, we're live, so you could talk in the microphone. I feel like Mark Marin would not go out to a Guitar Center. I think he would. Really? Yeah, I went to a Guitar Center with Wax. You know? Yeah, it's hard to tell if this is a guitar center, but I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like he'd be cooler than going to a guitar center. Well? Like, I feel like he would be more down to, like, support the mom and pop so, shops. Not that I even know him, obviously, but uh, I would just on, be surprised. Come on, autofocus. I would be surprised. Come on, autofocus. The autofocus is fucking up. Okay, is that a guitar center? Can anyone tell? I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> Caffeine's wearing off. After your like fourth cup. Yeah, I'm. It's getting to the point where I'm immune. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I wake up and the first thing I want to do is I'm a complete zombie. And the first thing I want to do is is like coffee, coffee, and then I have a little bit more caffeine, and then I go exercise, and then what time is it now? Like three p.m. I don't know what time it is. Yeah, it's three ish. I don't know where my phone went. Um, yeah, but. Caffeine pretty much doesn't affect me like it used to. Like, it, you know, l around the summer when you and I did our first podcast together, my first of a couple, the caffeine, you know, like 45 milligrams would make me sore. That's because we need to do a caffeine cleanse. Yeah. You know, we need to go like a solid day without caffeine. No, did you like want to wear these? Yeah, like you're I like those. About to fly an airplane? No. Yeah. Or a heli what we, I guess it's like, yeah, maybe like a little mini airplane. You want to yeah. do that? Yeah. You look like. Like the dad version of someone who's trying to be steampunk. I'm the dad version of anyone that's trying to be anything. I'm that age. <laughs> no, I'm saying like they're like dad goggles, but like you're wearing them in a steampunk fashion. A lot of people give me shit about these. Yeah. But me being one of those people. Yeah. But they cover my glasses while I drive. And I don't know why they got so warped. They're like warped. It's because of the sun. It's because they, they're on my dash and the sun beats down. Because in California, yeah. the sun's out all the time. And that's why Poppy wrote that song, Sick of the Sun, because she used to live in Nashville, Tennessee. Maybe she should move back then. And then Poppy came out here to become mega famous ultra YouTube celebrity. And she's playing tonight and we're not going. Yeah, well, it's sold out and we couldn't get tickets. Yeah. And we could have gotten tickets like a week ago, but who, I, I you know, I don't want to pay $65 to see Poppy uh, Me li neither. lip syncing. No, she's pretty, she's probably has a track, but there's a lot of backing tracks. And, uh, you know, whatever. It's like whatever production you want to do with your live act, if you want to put a bunch of backing tracks, that's fine. The, you know, but I'm not going to pay to see it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay, like, I paid $100 the last time Prince came around. I paid like 120 bucks, And this was in 2015. And I paid that money. Because it's Prince, and it's a live band, and everyone's playing their instruments. There's no backing tracks, and that that's the type of thing I'll go pay to see. I remember the first time I saw Mindless Self-Indulgence live, I'm just like, wow, they got such a big sound for only being four people on stage. And it's like, yeah, there's a huge backing track. And it's like, I'm not... I'm not knocking a backing track. Like I used to be like super just like, if you're not playing the instrument, if, if it's if it's not coming out, if, if what you're playing isn't coming out, then it's not it's not pure. You know, I used to be on that team, but now I really don't give a fuck. Like backing track the shit. Like there, there, we even did a tour, Downtown Brown did a tour where the first track we did had a backing track and Phil would play to the backing track because there was a lot going on. There's a bunch of sequenced drums and there's a bunch of like cool synths and stuff like that. Yeah. So it is what it is. But I don't have money to pay $65 to watch someone sing into a backing track when I could just listen to her album on Spotify and enjoy it. Like, her, like the Poppy album is really good. It is. Uh, it's really, really good. And that's the thing. Like Finn, our boy Finn McKenty, the punk rock NBA, he put this thing out 
talking about baby metal and poppy, but I think the main uh, distinction between baby metal and poppy is the the poppy songs are really really catchy, and I I feel like she took that same formula and did it way better. That's just, but that's just my opinion. We're here with Allie. Hey guys. Allie's happy today. Right? Yeah. You having a good day? I am. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in the cubby, um, my little cave um, that I constructed for myself. I didn't really construct the cave, but yeah, this, good. Is, this is where, this is my editing bay that slash, nice. and this is where I'm going to be doing the filming of stuff from here on out. And I invited her into here to do the podcast because we're on episode 24. We've been doing this podcast for how long? I don't know how long, like six months, longer than that. Episode 23 performed really well. Green Jello. Everyone enjoyed it. That was a good one. I feel like that was, you know, from being behind the camera, that perspective, I felt like Bill said a lot of inspiring stuff. Oh, I'm going to move around. That's I, why, that's I thought you told me you wanted me to stop when you start doing No, I don't that. give a shit anymore. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be shaky and weird, and I'm going to go to Trader Joe's, and I'm going to talk to myself, and I'm going to look at the floor, and I'm going to be anxious, and I'm going to be sweaty, and I'm going to wear my sunglasses, and yeah. Yeah, well, you're making me dizzy, so knock it off. Am I making you dizzy, there really? You Is this making you dizzy? Yeah, because I'm like looking at you, and you're like swirling around. Well, I'm making myself dizzy, so... But I have a lot of energy. I, can't I guess what it. I was saying is that the Green Jello episode from being behind the camera, that perspective was really inspiring. Mm-hmm. I felt like he said a lot of really cool, you know, inspiring things about about he like did. yeah, just about how like everyone can come together and get a piece of the creativity and artistry and musicianship that goes into Green Jello. And he was just like cool. I was like, wow, this guy's I think really yeah, awesome. It was immensely inspiring, um, especially just me being the little ten-year-old boy. I'm just a grown version of that ten-year-old boy listening to him talk yeah. about uh, something that he created, like in his apartment, essentially, and the fact that he was able to get a record contract by just pitching some record guy while he was eating his lunch. Uh, yeah, it's like anything can happen, and especially in this city, not in Long Beach. Maybe anything could happen in this city, like back in the '90s. <laughs> yeah, things are a little bit different now. I feel yeah. like I feel now like now you're probably just gonna get shot at the park or something. I feel like nowadays you have to establish yourself online and you have to actually like create a fan base. And then what's gonna happen is is if you do it, if you're able to do it on your own, then a label is gonna just grab that and maybe put a little bit more money behind it and then like take a piece of it. Or you could like try to go like on American Idol or something, you know, and try to get past. How many people that actually won American Idol and how many people that actually won uh, The Voice uh, do we hear on the radio or are big stars? No, you don't. But they get bookings. Like, that's the thing. Because when I was working at the jazz club in New York, like, there would be people who would be like, he was on American Idol or America's Got Talent. I'm like, I've never, you know, I don't see that. But he would get booked and, like, it would sell. Yeah, but how many how many artists are you into? Pers- like, me personally? Like, got their start on any of those shows. Zero for me. Zero. Yeah. Like, I mean, the closest thing, the closest thing in like the rock genre would be Daughtry, uh, Carrie Underwood. Uh, what's it? Ruben Stuttered. I mean, they, like, that Clay uh, Aiken. Who was Ruben the first Stuttered. one? The first one. Kelly yeah. Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Yeah, she's cool. She's cool. She's got a great voice. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, like who else? I don't know. That's it. Hold the mic close to your mouth. That's it. Yeah, I like having the mics like this way better. Yeah. What's your opinion on it? You like it on a stand? I want like the mouthpiece that comes around so I can feel like a pop star. You want the Britney Spears? um, Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. You know, some people do like all the the daytime and nighttime talk shows do the lapel thing where they have the, you know, it's taped underneath the shirt or whatever. Like we get really, those are expensive though. Yeah. This is all I got. I I put, I put these mics on a fucking credit card. The things on your lapel too, when I used to like do some audio stuff, they get, they like trap friction. So sometimes you hear... And it's like really embarrassing. You hear fupa. You go. F- they go foo. And they make like a weird pa. fuzz pop because like a. They a go little, foo. Yeah, yeah, because like static or friction like hits them. I don't know. I'm excited that we're doing this in my little cave because I didn't have to move anything. Yes. Yeah. Here we are. Convenience meets um, opportunity. <laughs> Convenience is key. So, yeah. so Allison, we live in this place now, and what are your yeah. feelings? Um, you can hear someone upstairs. Yeah, it's the Iron Maiden yeah. dude. He was having sex the other night. He was sexy. Yeah. So this is the funny scoop that's going on. They can probably hear us up there. No, they can't. Yeah. They have to have their ear to the floor. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Well. 
Do you, you probably never watched Will and Grace back in the day because like you're not that gay. No, I'm, you, you I'm never, sort of gay, but yeah, not, you're that, not gay. that You're yeah. not Will and Grace gay. No. There's an episode where they're I'm listening. These back on. They're listening to the drama like through the grate in the floor of like their neighbors. I'm putting these back on. Okay. Keep going though. Does this make you feel better? Well, that should light my, is so. I put my hood on. The light is so bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go full Unabomber. Like, where are your sunglasses? All right. I don't know where they are. Okay. Well. We're, um. What was I saying though? Oh yeah. So. You were saying they listen to the, the drama. Up, upstairs neighbors. Put it really close to you. You're upstairs, talking about upstairs neighbors. This can be like the ASMR part. The upstairs neighbors. You got to get closer. I don't know if that's his mother or. It's his mother. His like friend that he's banging either way it's gross and he's banging her no i don't think he's banging her I think. <laughs> are you sure yeah yeah he's banging a, a younger woman that he just had over because he would be banging every night a part of me wants to think that they're banging though because it's so gross no that um, it's funny that's either his aunt you think so and the kid is his nephew or that's his mom and the kid is his or my theory is that it's their kid and it's a cyclops Oh yeah, like that. Like he had sex with his mom. Yeah, and, and they, they had, had like a cyclops child. And it's had, like they had a, a cyclops flipper baby. Yeah, and he, that's why this kid is literally running around all day. And it's night. not all day. Just he goes boom, to boom, school. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's only well, in the morning. Whatever, in the morning, she's yeah. running, running, running. Because I'm a very light sleeper, so I notice all this. He wakes up and then he puts on uh, the Trooper by Iron Maiden. He did well. He put on a couple songs today. It wasn't that bad. I'm getting used to it. I don't hear it. I sleep through all of it. Yeah, you're a very heavy sleeper. I didn't even hear the banging. Oh, he was banging. Yeah. He was going, he, he, I think he had a friend over because he was banging like, he banged like three or four times that night. Yeah. But it was really loud. And that's the thing is if, he, if he's living with either his aunt or his mother, it's one of the two. She had to have heard that because it was like, like, and then the kid got up in the morning. So it's like, he's, he's banging, like, he's like really going for it. And there's it's like, probably like, is it like a one bedroom up there? It's probably a one bedroom, right? No, it's big. You think so? really like two bedroom? It takes up the whole upstairs because when they run, they go from here to here. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder what they're up to. It might be, or maybe it's just one bedroom and he was just in the bedroom. And, yeah. and but where's the kid? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is he in a cage? Probably. Like maybe in in like a chest that he keeps at the foot of the bed. Yeah, like uh, like uh, uh, Pyro Joe. Like Pyro Joe. It, it, hey, uh, our <laughs> we recommend that if anyone has a Netflix subscription that you watch I Am a Killer. It's on season two. It will lull you to sleep at yeah, night. Yeah, and we watch it every night as we're going to bed. We watch I Am a Killer, and it, uh, mm-hmm. it's really intense. So, and, but s- some of these human beings have a really sad story. Yeah, like, Pyro Joe. Like Pyro Joe. Pyro Joe. I, f- I felt legitimately sad for because it. His whether or not he was messing up the story or not, like his dad sold either he or his brother to some guy for sex so he could get moonshine in uh, in the woods of Virginia. It was some like crazy backwoods shit. Poor Pyro Joe. Yeah, that was sad. Yeah. But then there's other people that are just terrible, like the the guy that killed his grandma. He just beat his grandma to death with uh, like a baseball bat. But that guy was like also abused. So it's like these people are raising monsters, you know? Well, I think really what it comes down to is like the more abuse you sustain as a child, the more likely you are to to become a sociopath, psychopath, or, or just like yeah. have so much internal rage that you straight up hurt people and you do terrible things. And, and also it, it seems like there's a huge correlation between addiction and abuse. So uh, Allie and I were talking, yeah, it's like... It, like I was abused growing up and I definitely have addictive tendencies, but I don't think I, I don't think it was to the point where I possessed the capacity, the, the capacity to hurt another human being. And if I, if I do hurt someone, I usually feel pretty bad about it. I feel terrible about it. I feel terrible. Like when I make a promise to someone and I can't do it the way they want to, even if that promise is like from them manipulating me. Yeah. That happened two days ago. Yep. Yeah, we don't need to go into it. We don't. But the, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is I, someone did a, a favor for me and then they expected a million favors in return and like, and like favors that are way bigger than the favor they were doing. Yes. And the lesson we learned here is standing your ground, you know, I'm not before, very, before anything. I'm not very good at it. Because if you stand your ground right in the beginning, nothing will get past you, you know? Pretty much, I want to make everyone happy, and I want to do everything for everybody. If if they're helping me out, I want to do what I can to help them, and then I eventually get spread too thin, and I'm and then I get super anxious about it, and then I don't know, you know, it all ends up 
poopy. You're you're just one more abusive episode away from becoming Pyro Joe. Yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm gonna light this fucking place on fire. Yeah, no, no more Iron Maiden in the morning. Yeah, you're gonna light them all yeah, on fire. Yeah, 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 you're right about to become Pyro Joe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did you ever Is watch that like it? a Jewish song? No, it's a uh, Police Academy. Did you ever okay. see Police Academy Four? Citizens on Patrol. My dad. Citizens like, on Patrol. That's like my dad's favorite movie. Citizen. Oh, he likes Police Academy Four. My dad loves specific. Police Academy. I don't know. Maybe just, not, I don't. The, just you know, there's like six or seven. He probably of them. loves all of them. Okay. I, I don't know. Police Academy Four is, is has a young David Spade in it, mm. and um, pretty much what they do is they decide that the citizens are going to have police abilities. They're gonna pretty much give all of the 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 citizens like or whoever uh, whoever jumps into this program COP Citizens on Patrol. That's, that sounds fun. Yeah, you know it's a great it's great it's on H, uh, 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 I think it's on Netflix right now. I think all the Police Academy movies. We should are, watch them. We should watch Police Academy four. You don't want to start at one? No, you just watch four. Really? That's the only. That's the best one. Oh. Citizens on patrol because it starts off. Da, 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 okay. Da, 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 da. Citizens you're, you're on like, patrol. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's because I there was some sort it's of like because Hebrew. Hightower. Um, there's a part in the movie where they want to teach. They want to teach the citizens, uh, which includes a young David Spade. They want to teach him a lesson, right? So they uh, they uh, put. They put David Spade and all his cronies in a police, like a SWAT vehicle, like that locks, and they put him in there with Tackleberry, not Tackleberry, Hightower, the the uh, Bubba Smith who used to play for Michigan State Spartans. This description is so beyond me right now. Anyway, they put him, and he's dressed up in this voodoo shit, and they put him in the back of the with a with a corpse and. Bubba Smith dressed up as the voodoo guy, and then he starts going, yama, 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 yama. And they put him back there, and they lock him. They lock David Spade and his two friends back there. And uh, Is this like the premise of the movie? This isn't the present. This is just a scene in the movie. Oh. <laughs> and he goes, yama, 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 yama. Oh, that's the song. Okay. Yama, 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 yama. And he, he sprinkles his dust on, on the body bag, and then suddenly the body starts moving. Like it's some voodoo. Like some voodoo shit. Oh. And the body starts moving. And then a chain that you hear a chainsaw start up and it goes rips through the body bag. And then David Spade and his friends are like, ah, and then they run away and they're like, we taught those kids a lesson. And it, it, but it's, it's, uh, was a form of hazing. It was Tackleberry. And then it was High Tower, played by Boba Smith. And then Steve Gutenberry. These what? are the craziest last names. Well, Steve Gutenberry, his name was Mahoney. Okay. In the Police Academy movie. And then movies. there's a High Tower. Yeah. And High Tower is Bubba Smith, who's what's the other last a big name? giant black man. What was the other last name? You said another crazy ass last Tackleberry. name. Tackleberry. Tackleberry. Tackleberry is the is the guy that's obsessed with like big guns and blowing shit up. Okay. Uh he's like the military ass police dude. But but he's like lovable. We should watch it. Yeah. Well I don't know what the hell okay, is. Okay, so on. Steve Gutenberg is, I don't need the whole description. Steve Gutenberg is Mahoney. He's like the ladies' man. He's All the right. he's the uh the suave, uh handsome, smiley uh main character in all the police academy movies that's always trying to get the girl and gets the girl in the end and he uh you know, he's Steve Gutenberg. Oh, I have no idea who that is. Hightower is the guy that likes blowing shit up and likes big guns. And, okay. And no the high tower no, no, high tower is Bubba Smith, the big the big giant African American gentleman, and then is he the one that makes sound effects? He's the one that goes yummy, yummy, yummy. But he's yama. always make he's always no, the making sound the effects, sound effect guy. That's the sound effects. That's Michael Winslow. Oh, okay. And what the fuck is his name in the Police Academy movies? But he's he's the guy going. Yeah. Is he also a comic? Yeah, he's a stand up. That's right. Yeah, Michael Winslow. Crazy. He still does it. Yeah, I think I knew that. He still does it. He still makes the noises, and he was in Spaceballs as well. He's like, I got the bleeps and I got the creeps. Hmm. You know, did all that. Yeah. Well, we well we should watch. Have without... you seen Spaceballs? No, but please don't describe it. Okay. Please. Spaceballs <laughs> no, is a Mel Brooks it. movie. <laughs> please stop. Spaceballs is a Mel Brooks no, movie. No, no, don't. I don't want to know about it. I want to like. I'm just starring down. John Candy. You know how I am. I don't like knowing about a movie I'm going to see. I just like going into it blindly. But this is the thing. I, all I'm telling you is like Who people no, are is like actors and plot premise points i'm not telling you what actually happens like what the outcome is i'm telling you like it stars this person as this type of character yeah let's let's see it we should bubba watch smith it. is hightower yeah he also played football for the michigan state spartans my mother went to michigan state and she actually went to school with your bubba mom, smith your mom hooked up with him huh? I, did, I don't know possibly i doubt it i highly doubt not, it really i don't think so mama p and bubba smith hey we should ask um yeah well my mom did say in college she went on many dates you never know 
Yeah. Maybe she got it on mm-hmm. with Bubba Smith. Who that'd knows? Be, be but she ended up with my father and and they met in college. And, and then, then I hear you are. And then my father said, I don't know. If you like miss someone, does that mean you love them? Like that was the way he told my mother that he loved her. And was he like, what was are a, emotions? It was a question. He told her he loved her by asking her a question. Maybe she thought that was poetic. No, he's just an asshole. He said, if I miss you, does that mean I love he you? He said, if you like miss a person a whole lot, does that mean you love them? And your mom said what? And my mom was like, marry me. Oh, God. No, I, I, I mean, that that's not how it went, I don't think. But she did tell me the story that, like, she, you know, she reflects that that was how inept he was at, at, at like expressing feelings. his feelings. Yeah, yeah. he's he, like, I miss he, you. So he I was missed. like, so if you like, he was didn't even say, I miss you, therefore I love you. He said, he said, you know, if you miss a person a whole lot, does that mean you love them? It's like how robotic he was. Like, my dad couldn't sign a card with saying, I love you. He just said, love ya, Y-A. And he never would say, I love you, like, with his mouth in your presence. He would just, you know, a Christmas would come along. We hadn't talked in eight, nine months. And, you know, we you'd get the card and the check would be in the card. Just open the car right up like this. Yeah. Check falls Check out. falls out and just it says one or two words and love ya. Yeah. But sometimes card right in the trash. So, sometimes I didn't even get love ya, but you'd only get the check. But I mean, I don't know. Like the more therapy I go to, the more he, was he capable of love? Did anyone ever tell him that they loved him? You know, I don't know. It all goes around. Yeah, I mean, like he was definitely abused growing up. He had a kind of a he he had a sad story. His dad kicked the shit out of him. He was the oldest and he was he misbehaved a lot. So he got sent to, to military boarding school in high school because he was he was like the black sheep of the family. He was the oldest. He like he took the car out for joy rides. He, you know, he was he, you know, but then he went to military boarding school and they kicked the shit out of him or did whatever they did to him and while he was at that military boarding school, his father actually died and he wasn't allowed to go to the funeral. Mm. Yeah, the boarding school kept him. Wow. That's crazy, huh? Yeah. But anyway, we don't need to get into my father right now. Well, it's kind of weird when like people forget who they used to be when they were young and then they end up turning into like maybe the dicks they never wanted to become. Right? Do you follow what I'm saying? Um, so like here's your dad being like all what is it time to change it? No, I'm just trying to get the autofocus. Well, so here's here's somebody just in a general, you know. Sum- summary of the person. Here's someone who's probably like, you know, crazy and wild, maybe fun. And then his dad beat him down. And then he turned into an adult. And well, then he became a dad. And then he beat his son down. Yeah, this is what I think happened. This, you know? is, this is my hypothesis. I think he was, uh, he was sort of fun to be around and had a big personality when he was young. And, and it, got the beat, it got beaten out of him. Well, pretty much what happened is he started like my started having kids with my mother and then he had this kind of cushy f- uh, job at Ford Motor Company he had a what, what do they call it like a corporate position and what ended up happening is he he was like oh I can make more money doing this other thing and so he quit his big cushy corporate job and my mom was like don't quit that job think about the kids think about the insurance like keep your good job and and my dad was like no American dream we got to go bigger we got to go harder we we need more when he already had a good salary, he already had all the all the good things. You know, he was he was doing well. So he went for the bigger, he went for the more money, and he went for the bigger job, and and it all just blew up in his face. And he got, I think he got fired consecutively consecutively for like three different jobs, and he burned the bridge at Ford. But so, was he an asshole before that? Uh, apparently, according to my mom, he was nice when we were young. When, but then after that happened, he like. He he turned into a total dick. Yeah, like he, he, all of his dreams failed. Yeah, you, you know, and and I like in his dream, I it seemed to me like it pretty much had to do with status, wealth, uh, you know, having nice things, being able to flex, and just be like, hey, you know, I'm doing all right. I you know I have the kids and I have. He wanted his kids to all be pretty and do sports, and he you know he wanted to have a hot wife, and he, you know. He's the type of dude that actually reads the articles in Playboy magazine. Like he wanted to fucking have nice things. And what ended up happening is he just was in a, a buttload of debt and he was living in a house that he couldn't afford with a wife that was super hyper emotional and kids that were little fatties. And he just was like, looked at his life and just fucking hated it. 
he probably was suicidal. He pro- he was definitely depressed, and he he ended up having to sell cars. You know, he used to be he used to have a cushy white collar job for Ford Ford Motor Company. He went to that to fucking selling the same cars that he used to be a fucking executive for. Imagine that. That's like life slapping you in the face. So he'd come home every day and his fat little kids, which I was one of them, and he'd be like, this fat little shit. He can't even sit up straight at the dinner table. And and yeah, I'm pretty sure that he like reverted to all of that shit that his dad used to say to him, that his dad used to do, and his dad used to fucking hit him and just, you know, it was like my way or the highway. And I'm pretty sure he just like went into autopilot and was fucking miserable, and he'd come home every day and just want a different life, so he just fucking screamed at his kids, he just picked on his kids, he just beat up on his kids, like, with his words, and sometimes with his fists, and we just, and I just had to sit there, and I just took it, you know, I took it, and I took it, and I took it, and even into my 20s, I took it when I saw him, but then I just stayed away from him, and then in my 30s, I took it, and just stayed away from him even more, so I just, like, I was around him, I got punished, whether I liked it or not, because he's a miserable dude. And then he died, and he died without us ever reconciling, without him ever apologizing, and and it just left me feeling like what, what, and uh, but yeah, but like, I, but going to therapy, I, I feel sorry for the guy. Really, he had the American dream, he had the cushy job, he had the good salary, and he gave it up because he wanted more. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with giving up something to go for something bigger, you know, or else people might not ever get to where they want to go. Don't burn bridges, though. but don't burn bridges, and don't be a fucking asshole. That's kind of what you need to do along the way. Yeah, I don't know. I used to be like really pissed off at my dad, and I used to hate my dad, and I used to be like, eh, eh, eh. but now I'm just kind of like, wow, he he had a sad life. He was a sad guy. He was a, he was a lonely dude, and he wasn't very nice to his kids, and therefore he didn't have a very good relationship with his kids. Uh, my brother and myself, um, yeah, we yeah. we barely fucking talked to the guy. And whenever we did, he would just shit on us and tell us that what we were doing was stupid. So we stopped talking to him. Yeah. And then he died in a fucking, he died in fucking Tennessee where he had no family or no friends. And my brother and my sister sat next to him as it happened. And I decided to stay on tour with my band because I was pissed off. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, I said, let's not talk about that. And we just did. But you always do that. You're like, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I got sunglasses on. Caffeine doesn't affect me. Allie, do you like me? I love you. Yeah. Yeah. But you do the same thing all the time. Are you starting to get annoyed with me? No, I'm just starting to like be able to see patterns, the lead up. (laughs) Yeah. The equation. Yeah. You know, which then equals what happened. You're like, sub- subject gets dropped. Subject. You're not going to talk about it, but then all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, we find ourselves here. Yeah. Having just talked about it. Yeah. Well, and it was actually a good talk. Oh, was it a good talk? It was. Or I was it just it. me talking and you listening? I was listening, yeah. but I enjoyed the listen. Well, thanks, Pete. And I am fortunate enough to have a very good father, and I'm sorry that a lot of people out there have really bad fathers. Your dad's cool. I know a lot of people with really bad dads. Well, you, you, I mean, you had an intense relationship with your mother, but we don't need to go into that. No, but she's cool now. That's the thing. I feel like once she she made up for it. Once some people get like on the right meds or like the right amount of like, you know, champagne or Chardonnay. You know, my mom sucked (laughs) until she got on the right amount of champagne. Honestly, sometimes I, I stop over at the house before work and she's already like, you know, a glass in, and she's like, I didn't know you were going to be here. And I'm like, it doesn't really matter, but I could see that you're having a good time. Allie, I'm diverting real quick, but like... Do we need to start the camera? No, over? everything's fine. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we could do that real quick. One sec. When I first brought up, let's do the podcast where the mics are already set up so we, I don't have to move a bunch. That's not how I brought it up. I just said, I want to do the podcast in the in my cubby area. And you wanted to, let's move over on the couch. Let's make it look nice. Let's make it look cute. Are you do, making sure my hair is good? Because I don't care. It just looks n- insane. My hair yeah. looks insane. Yeah, okay, go on. Divert. Uh, does it really feel that uncomfortable right now? Recording? Yeah, my ass is on a hard chair. Well, what? Okay. <laughs> but the room itself is not uncomfortable. But no, I did want to sit on like the cushy couch. I can see you clenching your jaw. It's like making the headphones move. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, I do that all day, every day. Yeah. That's why I have to wear that mouth guard. But because even in my sleep, I'm stressed out and I'm clenching my jaw. Mm, I can feel it in my sleep. Yeah. All I'm saying is that I want it to be comfortable on the like cushy couch. Lately, my tailbone has been hurting because I've been sitting down and painting on this hard ass chair. And now we're just like sitting on the hard ass chairs. So it's not like I'm, I'm not, comfortable. Like, conscious. Yeah. But my, my butt has hurt lately. And I told you that like, my tailbone hurts. It's from all that bike riding. 
It's from the bike riding and like all the sitting on this chair. Ellie's like, oh, we're going to live by the beach and we're going to go riding bikes all the time. And then she's like, my butt hurts. My butt hurts. Yeah. Fucking bicycle seats are like crazy. Yeah. I need to like get a fucking memory foam one. Imagine having a pair of testicles in between your legs. I couldn't. I, well, like, where do they even go when you sit on those? They uh, they just get scrunched and, and plopped they, all like, over the place. They like go back inside. They're like... <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Yeah, right? Because yeah. it's like right in there. It's right in sometimes there. Sometimes my balls go back inside me. But anyway. 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 So um, here we are. This is episode 24. We've been doing this podcast and you've been such a wonderful help and you haven't complained at all and we have, we've have we never gotten in a disagreement trying to do any of these podcasts ever, not once. I actually always complain about how I'm, like my seating arrangement. Yeah, that's your thing. In the van, I complain about it. And yeah. then now this. But I did buy you that seat. I'm trying to make it better. What yeah. okay, what we need to, okay, you know they sell memory foam like seats, right? We just need to buy you one for the van and for this chair. My butt can only sit on memory foam. That it's like that's gonna be my one condition. So let let's <laughs> let's get you a, a memory foam cushion for your ass. Yeah. 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 Why not? I mean you My ass is apparently very high maintenance. You can get one at like probably Target or something. Mm-hmm. Right? Does anyone know? I bet. Does anyone know out there? I'm going to take these headphones off. Yeah, and I have my cucumber water in here. I got my cucumber water. Mm, with my memory foam butt cushion. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't even know. Where do we go from here? You I don't bu- know. I was talking about my mom, and then you started talking about the hard-ass chairs. Yeah, I diverted. Yeah. I mean, but th- that's the thing is I don't think you want to talk about your mother on this podcast. Do I don't you? know. I think it's pretty funny that she, like, just drinks, like, you know, Chardonnay now, and she's, like, so much more pleasant to, like, hang out with. Well, and sh- she's on pharmaceutical drugs that change your mood yeah. yeah and she's like so much cooler okay so i don't need to like dive into it but it's just funny it's yeah. funny to me she's on the right drugs apparently mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. maybe if i was on the right drugs and i was drinking chardonnay every night it'd be really cool to be around i also probably th- no. <laughs> oh thanks a lot i also think with as far as your mother's concerned i think she had a chance to maybe like look at the way she acted and maybe analyze it a tiny bit like you guys fought so much like there had to have been some point where she's like maybe i'm kind of not very nice do you think she had any self-reflection that caused her to act differently or do you think it's straight up just the alcohol and it's just the drugs (laughs) no seriously that's a serious question yeah um any self-reflection yeah i mean i'm sure you know has she ever apologized for the way that she used to treat you back when you were younger yeah she apologizes okay you know but it's usually just because she's drinking chardonnay (laughs) Okay. <laughs> no, but um, well, maybe that's the lubricant for the self reflection. Yeah, no, she's she's like apologized, but she's but she's capable of looking at her actions and being objective about it. Well, yeah, but everything also has to kind of be like you know a little half joke or you know it can't ever be like a serious like we're gonna have a talk and really apologize to each other. It's always like half take ownership of what you did, laugh about it, make some jokes about it, and then gee, like, who else on. acts like that? You? No, you. Oh. Yeah. I know I do. But that's, you know. But you don't need to take ownership over much. I haven't done anything wrong ever no, in my yeah, life. Yeah. yeah, you're perfect. I am, actually. She's perfect, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But I rarely do anything wrong, you know, socially. Yeah. Right? I mean, I don't know. I'm not sitting here keeping tabs on you. Yeah, thank you. I just know that. You uh, only know how much time you give me when we hang out. Yeah, I am keeping tabs on that. You are? Yeah. Thank you. Well, um... I do forget how much we hang out, and then sometimes I feel like we don't hang out, and then you remind me. Well, yeah, because you're like, okay, we're going to do this tomorrow, and I'm like, I'm like, Allie, we, I literally spent the last three days with you doing everything you wanted to do, and I kind of have some stuff that I want to do. I mean, I don't have... Yeah. Any, um, yeah. I, I, and I need to be better with uh, my time. Management. Management, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah. you know, but I, I find myself I get distracted very easily. But now, I mean, we get, I have this big monitor, so I can do all the video editing, and that's nice. And uh, uh, everything is starting to feel kind of streamlined. Like it was way easier for me to set up these mics here than drag everything into the other room and set up the camera in the other room. So here we are. Here we are. We're, I'm I'm comfortable. And I'm sorry about your butt, but we can find a way to make you more comfortable. And also, we are 34 minutes into this podcast, which means like you don't even have to sit there that much longer once you get off that thing you can go and you can go get your sunday your vegan sunday on fourth street let's talk about calorie vegan is it really 2000 calories i don't probably let's talk about long beach a little bit okay okay ask Um, me anything when did we decide that it was going to be long beach because i remember there was a a minute there where you wanted to live in la 
Not and not just LA County. You wanted to live in like Los Angeles. Well, my initial plan when I was living in New York was that I was going to buy a Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> not even, not even a car. And die. <laughs> I was just gonna no, because like I, you know, have owned motorcycles in the past, and I am a very experienced driver. She is. And um, I just wanted to buy a Vespa, something that would just be on the street, because I don't even like taking the freeway with a motorcycle anyway. And that we would be somewhere in LA and I'd only have my Vespa as like my, you know, city transportation. You need a car. And then you're like, you need a car. And I was like, all right. So then I moved back here, back to California. And then um, I was still thinking LA. And then you said basically Long Beach. You're like, I'll do Long Beach. And I was like, you know what? I'm okay with Long Beach. But I, it obviously couldn't be in anyone else's house. I wanted to have our own space because I'm tired of being roommates with people. I just thought uh, your argument for wanting to live in Pasadena was fucking hilarious. You're, you're talking to me, Neil Patterson. You're like, yeah, and there's like so many cute shops and we can like walk to get coffee. And I'm just thinking to myself, it's like, what? Like, I, I have a van and living in LA, trying to get a parking spot, like but Pasadena is really easy to park in. Yeah, I get that. Like Pasadena is actually like on the outskirts of like you know main areas in LA, so like you could do like there's tons of street parking there. Isn't there? Tons, yeah. But you know, it's I like Pasadena. You know, it's nice. It's pretty warm there. Um, there's tons of parking. The rent's not super super high. It's probably more expensive than it's down here. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably. I don't it's know. Close. I just did not want to. To me, all I think of, uh, and going back to my father, all I think of when I think of Pasadena is Rose Bowl, Michigan State Spartans, and that stupid fucking sweatshirt he used to wear all the time. And I don't even know why my brain well, made that connection. It's just here's I, the thing. Rose Bowl, dirty sweatshirt, father, okay. hate Pasadena. <laughs> okay, the Rose Bowl, first of all, is like 3.1 mm. miles around, and you can run around it, and then it's right next to like... A nice coffee shop no, and no. a place you can walk. It's right next you to like... You can get treats for your dog. No, it's right next to all these hills and all these trails, and it's like you can actually be in Los Angeles, but also like be in nature, so it's kind of cool. But in Long Beach, you can live a five-minute, ten-minute bike ride from a dirty-ass ocean and a bunch of like oil refineries. Honestly. <laughs> like okay long beach is cool like i do like being here and not being so landlocked but like why the fuck was the sand black because like that's we a don't, good question there's there's no black sand beaches here is that does that's like know? ireland or some shit does anybody know why the sand uh, was black why well, it's probably because the industry, if you think about it, okay, so Long Beach, the, the port of Long Beach is supposedly the number one uh, port as far as, you know, what's it called? Where they intake. It's like the- uh, Imports? In, 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 yeah, imp, imports. <laughs> intake. Imports. Port. Yeah, import. 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 Yeah, but, Export. But all of the import, like uh, uh, as far as the United States is concerned and the importing of goods. A lot of shit comes through yeah, Long Beach. A lot Beach. of shit comes through A lot through of shit, including people and drugs and people just and drugs. bullshit and, from China. Hey, have you ever seen the, the movie Dexter? Yeah, there's shipping containers and some people get murdered in them probably. Yeah, like probably, in the TV I show bet. Dexter. I bet. And then he was a little boy. And he was just soaked in blood. Are and we going to do, do another like... Yeah, that's me talking recap. about Dexter. Yeah, Dexter, uh, it stars uh, Michael okay. C. Thomas. No, no, no. We're, getting, we're getting ahead Tom, of ourselves. Let's talk about the black sand. Because the white sand is all over the beach. And then right next to the water is the black sand. And it looks like mud. And everyone's just running around and playing in it. And I was kind of like, what it's the fuck is dirt. that? It's probably dirt. It's and the water is very still, in, uh, the ocean water in Long Beach. So if you if you go on the beach, you notice that there isn't much of a tide because it's facing south. And if you go to like Venice or you go to Santa Monica, they, they, there's actually a fucking tide. Would you or, swim in there? Would you swim in that area? I have or? swam in Venice. That's Venice. Would you swim where we were yesterday though? That, that bike area? I have maybe run in. I feel like you're going to like step on a needle. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> It's kind of beat up, but it, but, but I it's like cool. It. I like it too. The yeah. thing I like about Long Beach like is, it. is it's south of the four hundred five, and most people that are on the four hundred five are just going past it. And I feel like the only people that get off and go to Long Beach are people that live in Long Beach. So I feel like it's kind of sectioned off. Yeah, I feel like people that come down here, they're either here for work, which isn't that many people, or they're just here because this is where they are. It, feel, it feels like they're all a, at the we work. Yeah, they're all at the we work. <laughs> we don't work. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I work. We don't work. We should make a we don't work next we to the we work. work. We don't work. Uh, everyone just goes over there and doesn't do anything. But my old roommate, Bill, when I used to live with him in Long Beach, he took me for a bike ride one time. 
and we were riding around. He said, you know, this is the closest thing you're going to get to a Midwest city out here in Southern California. And in a way... Is that true? No, in a way, he's kind of right because there, there's actually... There's blocks with houses. You, you know what I'm saying? I think he, I th- I think he just meant the spacing of it because when you get up to la everything is like everyone's on top of each other i mean i mean well, yeah we're definitely there's definitely like nine people, on top, people us, on, right? on top of us but but i feel just the spacing of the city everything's spaced out a yeah. little bit more down here versus th- like new york or something and i feel like even in orange county like there isn't a whole lot of spacing it's just like there's people on top of people um i'm sure like uh, where you grew up and they had a little bit more money that it's definitely things that are more spaced out yeah but i feel like long beach is like affordable and has that kind of midwest like shit is a little bit spaced out kind of feeling yeah i mean besides so like when my mom and dad came to visit you obviously know this story but they came and we went to like the wharf or whatever and then on our way back to the house we were driving and there was a bunch of cops everywhere like right down the street where the gas station is and then there was a a school bus and like some like police blockade set up and then a pair of shoes under the school bus. And I was like, like the Wicked Witch, like, like Wizard of Oz, Wizard like, of Oz, but like except, Nikes, except the bus was. Yeah. The house that killed the witch was a, a school bus that killed a human. Yes. Yeah. And when the shoes come off, people are usually dead. Did the shoes curl up like the Wicked Witch? Shoes? No, no, no. They're like. They're like a pair of like basketball looking shoes. So you were driving by and you saw a dead body. And then we looked and we're like, oh shit, there's a pair of shoes on the ground and like a police blockade is up. That's probably a dead person because like the shoes are off. And then we peeked and there was totally a dead guy right there. And, and I what was did your like, parents welcome say? to my neighborhood. They were like, Jesus. And then I told them that like apparently Long Beach has like the highest amount of pedestrian deaths. I don't, I don't know if it's the highest amount, but it is a high Very amount. Very high amount. And, and I remember even when I was living up on 29th and Pacific, it, it's like I was wa- walking these dogs all the time. And it's like, be fucking careful crossing Pacific. Be careful crossing Magnolia because there's a lot. There's a pedestrians that cross and just get mowed down. It happened this summer, too, when you were staying with me in Long Beach. Yeah. There's a pedestrian that got mowed down on Pacific uh, just because there's a crosswalk, but there's not a light. So someone was just crossing the street. It so was besides like, the, you know, yeah, just crossing the street, boom. Yeah, so you have to be careful around here. So they, besides people getting hit by cars and getting shot, like Long Beach is cool. Well, yeah, and, and when we moved in here, there was a couple of shootings like right around here. Um, but it's been pretty chill since mm-hmm. then. I, I I don't feel super fucking freaked out. Like when I first moved in, I felt kind of freaked out. But like we've been here for how long has it been? Three weeks. Yeah. I don't feel so freaked out. But yeah, when we, when you ride your bikes. Definitely fucking look both ways. because, and, and that's back to the whole Midwest spacing of things. Because there's more space, I feel like people drive like L.A. drivers. Like, they drive like they're in a super fucking hurry, except there's more space in between the cars. Therefore, like, they can get more speed before they hit something. And speaking of that, like, nine blocks away from here, I'm going to post that fucking video on the podcast. Like, check out this video right here. There was nine blocks away from where we live. There are... On Daisy Street, there's a lot of these roundabouts. And they put the roundabouts in there to slow people down because people are taking these side streets and they're going way too fast. But this girl didn't give a shit. This drunk lady just fucking, like, hit the roundabout going about 100 miles an hour. And I'll post the video right here so you can see it. But, yeah, boom, hit the roundabout, hits a boulder, and then just flies in the air fast, fast in the Furious style, like Grand Theft yeah. Auto style. Yeah. Like, and um, Cue up R. Kelly, who has since been fly, canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I believe I can fly. But... But yeah, you just have, if you're in Long Beach and you're on a bike, be very fucking careful because there's people driving really fast on side streets and some of them are just running right into the roundabout and they're launching into the air and they're firing boulders at parked cars and it's an intense place. Yeah. This is an intense but place. I like it. I you like, like it? I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could uh, come to a compromise as far as because i didn't I, you know i lived i'm in, glad we didn't move to la i lived in west hollywood and i was bouncing around la a whole lot when i was homeless and it's just like you know there's too many fucking people like down here it's a little there's a little bit less people and we can still pop up to la when we want to do mm-hmm. stuff it's not super far away we're yeah. not as far away as we were in orange county i felt like when we were in orange county we were stuck there you know yeah like you can drive to work it's not a super fucking crazy commute it's just right down the 405 and then if you want to pop up to la to do your thing what's your thing do my thing you're getting back you're okay. getting back into it getting back at it ladies and gentlemen Allie is a, an accomplished performer and musical comedian and stand-up and she's getting back into I'm getting it. back to it and then when she gets famous 
like I can have her on the podcast and people will listen. Yeah, and you could like interview me like you don't know me. I'd be like, so Allison Sculia. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so you have your show on the seventh, and I have a show on the sixth. That's yeah, you want to plug our shows? Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. You, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Downtown Brown is going on tour again, uh, we, uh, and we're doing some shows with TSOL and the yes. band Guttermouth, and we will be playing in Los Angeles at the Viper Room, the world famous oh. Viper Room, Sunset. Oh. I've heard of that place, Sunset Boulevard, West Hollywood. Oh, crazy, crazy. Yeah, and wow. we're playing there on the seventh with the band TSOL. Oh, and then we have a five day run with the band Guttermouth that starts on oh. the eleventh in Reno. I have a feeling Nevada. they're, they're going to say a lot of bad words. Guttermouth. Yeah, is gutter- that why they're named that? Yeah, Guttermouth. They all just like. Their lyrics are highly fuck. A, their ly- lyrics are highly offensive, but oh. very tongue in cheek at the oh, same time. So thanks. somehow they gutter mouth hasn't gotten canceled, but no effects did. Oh, crazy! Well, but that's a whole different story. And if you want to see Ali Shula getting back on the comedy music wagon, um, you can come to the city of Burbank. What? And I am playing at the Park Bar and Grill. What's that? Um, it's an awesome little corner bar that's like kind of near a bunch of neighborhoods so they get a lot of like regular folk who just like hang um kendra's the bartender she's super rad she's always there she like hosts like the bartender is also the host shouts out to kendra so, dude sh- major shout out to kendra i love her shout out um Shouts. but yeah so if you find yourself in burbank on friday the 6th of march come to the park bar and grill it's five bucks that's it that's it yeah, and back to my plug. Tickets are available for all of the shows that we're doing. There's there's five, six, there's seven total shows in March that Downtown Brown is doing, all in support of either TSOL or Guttermouth. And you can find tickets for those on www.dtbmusic.com. DTB, D is in dog, T is in Tom, B is in Bill, music.com. Yeah. And, yeah, and while we're plugging shit, uh, we're up to $184 monthly on the Patreon. So check out patreon.com backslash Neil P. Neil P. If you want to support the show that you're currently listening to, we greatly appreciate it, your support. So, yes. so here we are. We're in Long Beach, California. You and I, Allie, we, we have recently hit our two-year anniversary. Almost. No, we we started hooking up in in January. Oh yeah, of but like our official anniversary date. Oh, none yeah. of that matters. As soon as... As soon as we made love <laughs> in Long Beach, California, it all started in Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah. Then we became soul flames, soul partners. Twin flames. Twin flames, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You flamed me. Mm-hmm. You're a major flamer. Yeah. I'm a total flamer. <laughs> so. so, yeah, it's been two years and maybe one day we can um, go to Catalina Island and then I will know that you are... The biggest flamer I've ever been with. Yeah. Because if we go to Cat- Catalina, what does that mean? What is what is the uh, significance of that to you? So, don't do that on the podcast. <laughs> Sorry. This is what I deal with all the time. You mm-hmm. held all your farts in the first year, and then after year one, this whole last 365 days have been farts. Well, most of our relationship was long distance that first year. Yeah. Although you would burp in the phone, so I would, you know, hear some of the gas. I don't do that very much these days. Well, we're not on the phone anymore. <laughs> yeah, I can just burp, and it's not as gross because it's not yeah. in your ear. Yeah. But um, what was I saying? What? Why is Catalina Island significant? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just something that I've always wanted to do. When I was a little girl. When I was a little girl. Here, explain. Okay, when I was like 17, 18, I just always kind of thought that like, I would want to go to Catalina Island with, you know, the person I was with and because I thought that would be a really cool trip. And like, I wanted to go kayaking over there and I, I didn't think it was like a big deal, but I was like, I always just wanted to go and I never went like anytime I ever dated someone, we never made it past like a year and a half mark. So I've technically never dated somebody without breaking up for over a year and a half. So, so right now this is my longest relationship. I'm the longest person you've ever dated. Yeah. I mean, not longest in length (laughs) i mean yeah (laughs) but yeah you've never dated someone longer than a year and a half huh yeah and we just never there's never a reason to like ever go with that person to catalina island because it's kind of dumb to get out there it costs like a hundred bucks a ferry ride round trip Mm -hmm. so it's like 
just to get there, it costs like $200. And it's like, what? But then like once you're there, you can like go kayaking, I guess Ooh. go hiking, oh. feel inadequate because apparently everyone there is rich. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I feel inadequate pretty much everywhere I go. So imagine us on Catalina. Imagine how a- inadequate I would feel like in Catalina. But it might be nice. I don't know. Or you might go and be like, well, that was a waste of 200 bucks. When I think of Catalina, I just think of the Descendants song called Catalina. So. Is it about the island? It just goes, uh, yeah, no, no, on the back of my boat. Oh. Looks like I'm stuck here. It's talking about on my way to Catalina. He, uh, he probably is talking about Catalina Island. Yeah, no. I, yeah, they, I mean, they're from around here. I mm. think they're from like Hermosa Beach or something. Oh. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's definitely talking about Catalina Island, <clears throat> Island, but I don't know who the protagonist is in that song. Maybe I, I, I should write like a sad song about Catalina Island. How like I've never gone, you know? I don't know. Are you missing that much? I don't. I don't think I am. Uh, Ryan, our old roommate, said he had a birthday there once. But yeah, like, so if we go to Catalina, what what does that mean to you? It will just be really significant because it will mean that, like, I told myself back then, oh, the person I end up going there with is going to be of some significance or importance because I'm going to finally have made it to this location with another person. So if I make it there with anyone. I'll be like, wow, this person obviously is special because I finally made it here. I don't. It doesn't really make sense or matter, but it's like in my mind, it's just been in your mind. I've it wanted. will hold significance. It's it's like yeah, it's like believing in like a magic number. Like it's it's as pointless as that. It's like it's not really magical or anything important, but to me, it is. So if you and I make it there, I'll be significant. Kind of yeah, I think. I'm not significant already. <laughs> no, yeah. not until you go to Catalina Island with me. All right. <laughs> okay, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I just you ain't with, shit right I now. I just sleep in the same bed as you and live with you and spend fart every day over with you. you and yeah. Fart all over yeah. you. Yeah. No, you are significant. I love you very much. I love you very much. Yeah. You're, you're significant to me as well. You've been very nice to me over these last two years. I have. I've literally never raised a finger to you. And I've been terribly abusive and horrible to her. But I'm working on it. Huh? No, we're, we're very nice to each other. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well... Sometimes I just have an idea in my head and I'm like, I just want to do that. And I, and I want to do it this way. And today I'm like, I want to do the podcast in the cubby. And you're like, let's do it on the couch. I'm like, yeah, I want it my way. That's literally how you acted. Yeah, that's how I acted. Yeah. And I said it wasn't very becoming of you. It wasn't very becoming of me. But wasn't. guess what? Who got their way? Me. Because you explained <laughs> yourself after you acted like a caveman. Okay, so first I acted like a caveman baby. You did. And I stomped in her car and I broke stuff and i took my starbucks and i poured it all over me and i peed, peed i my little wiener was peeing everywhere it was just shooting oh, everywhere and i'm like yeah ah, ah, ah. And yeah like, and i looked at the car next to me and i said i'm used to this and she's like calm this? down and i'm like ah, ah. And she's like calmly explain yourself and we can resolve this issue and then i said well, Allie, I would like to do it in my cave because I have the interface right here. I have my cool new monitor and I have the computer and I have all the mics already set up. So I and it'll and I already have a lighting set up. So it's yeah. like, why don't we just do it where everything's all lit? And it made sense, you know. It's like it's my lit. my butt's comfort versus the it's, it's lit convenience and setup in here. So it's here lit. we are. Here we are. It's lit. It's very lit. It's lit. I mean, I, and I'm not saying like using millennial slang, it's lit. I'm saying it literally is lit. Like we have lit the room in a way where it's very, um, I feel it's easy on the eye, mm-hmm. you know? It's very. And I wore sunglasses most of this podcast, which means I'm trying to be cool. Yeah. yeah. Was it? Was it a... A dud. Is that a bomb? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sunglasses. I wore my sunglasses and I bombed. Yeah. But, you know, here we are. Me and Allie. Enjoying our lives together. And arguing. <laughs> and you have nice cool earrings and you have a unique nice style. And you're getting back on the horse and you're performing again. And I'm performing too. And what's going to happen in 2020? Who knows? Yeah. I wrote um, a new fun song that um, kind of like, I guess you'd have to be inside the story to know, but you'll know. It like tells the story about when I slept over Andrew Dice Clay's house. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't know it was going to be Andrew Dice Clay's house until I walked in. And I was like, I'm spending the night in your dad's house, who was Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay's son invited Allie over. To... To what I thought was his house. He said, oh, you need a place to sleep tonight? 
you can stay the night at my house. Because that was when you were doing the bouncing around kind of homeless thing. I was bouncing around thing. LA. I was working at Coffee Bean. I didn't live in the city. Yeah. And he said, you could spend the night at my house. And I was like, cool, thanks, dude. And when we got to his house. It was Andrew Dice it was, Clay's he, house. Right before you walk in, he goes, keep your voice down. And I was like, okay, well, it's <laughs> keep late. Keep your voice down. The Dice Man is in the <laughs> yeah, other room. I, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, okay, it's late. Be quiet. The Dice Man <laughs> can hear us. <laughs> and I just, I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> I feel like it'd be funny if I could like somehow make the lyrics more about that situation instead of being so like vague because the new song is about that situation but it's very vague. Oh fuck being vague you need to be very specific. I should be very specific. You know, like, Here's a song the dice man's <laughs> in the other room. There's a cutout of him over there yeah. oh, and over there and over there and yeah, over there yeah. and there he is. Don't watching. wake the dice man. No he was awake <laughs> he was on the computer just like looking like a regular dad just like. <laughs> was he? Did he have a cigarette in his mouth? No, but he was just like did sitting he, there with his. Did big he have glasses. those cool sunglasses? He was wearing a wife beater. Yeah, and um, he, he looks like, like your dad. He looked like my dad. Your da- her dad's dice man. My dad is like if Andrew Dice Clay just like was more Italian because like he is Jewish. I don't know if everybody knows that. Oh, Dice is Jewish. Yeah, no, he's not. Okay, so the, the Italian thing is a bit. I mean, I guess you could like. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could act like that. You could act e- like that East and Coast. be Jewish. Yeah, yeah, it's just East Coast. Yeah. But your dad's legitimately East Coast but I, Italian. I swear to God, like he looked like my my dad, and I was like, "This is oddly familiar." I and just, also, this is not your house. This is your dad's house. I think it'd be just a funny animated video if it was like, you know, if the song was like very literal, like <laughs> uh, like I'm sleeping at, at Andrew Dice Clay's house. I'm the, sneaking into. Yes, yeah, I'm sn- being snuck into. Andrew Dice Clay's house. Well, and the kicker was that when you were trying to fall asleep, he like tried to kiss you and put his hand on you, and, and so you, unfortunately, yes. So, so, and I haven't talked to him. And since. it was not consensual. It was not. No. No. It did was he, really creepy. Did he overstep boundaries? A hundred percent, because he invited me into his place and said I could sleep on his couch, and I said awesome. And then when we got there, he said, "Oh, sorry, it's my dad's place, and I need to sneak you into my room." And me yeah. being like desperate for a place to sleep, I was like, "Okay, fine, whatever." Don't wake. The Dice Man, yeah. who's in the other room. P.S. That couch is AKA my bed, and I'm going to attempt to have sex with you. Yeah, was honestly. He, was he trying to like have, was he, was he being like super creepy or was he just trying to like. It was keep, creepy. Was it was like. To kiss at, you? Yeah, at first, because he's like a night. He, I thought he was a nice guy. Um, and we just like. We smoked a little bit. We were like listening to like fucking Pink Floyd, you know. You realize you're calling out a real human being on this podcast. I am. Right? Yeah. Oh man. I'm not naming names. But. Okay, it's one of Andrew Dice Clay's <laughs> children. I'm not naming one names. One of his two sons. I'm not naming name. Just here's just his dad's name. Here's the thing. I thought he was nice. He's a very nice guy in public in general, you know. And I've known him, and I've seen him around for years, so I felt comfortable being offered his couch his dad's couch his dad's yeah dice man but then couch. the couch turned into Cut. the bed and then the bed turned into this whole i don't want you to fall asleep until you kiss me thing Ew. and i was a little stoned and like freaked out but like also felt in control so i was like no i'm not gonna kiss you good night and i like rolled over and he just kind of kept like like petting me and and i just stayed awake all night Ew. i just laid there he just petted he you just while pet you slept. me all night and a part of me was like you know i guess i don't mind being pet but also like i'd rather be asleep yeah and then i went to work in the morning and everyone was like ali what's the what's wrong with you i would have just left i'm like i don't know i just fucking i was like kind of high and i just froze and i stayed and oh. i just i just got pet the whole night i'm sorry you had to go through that sweetie yeah i just always do that i always freeze i feel like we should mention real quick you know that there's a couple of reactions that people can have when they feel uncomfortable or they feel like they're being assaulted or taken advantage well, of. Well, female friends, I've, I've had a new, number of female friends that say a lot of times, and they've been abused in the past, whether it was by like someone in their family or someone that they knew personally, and a lot of times, yeah, they will freeze. I freeze, yeah. Yeah. Every, every, every single time. And it's, it's, it always makes me feel like shit. Like, my reaction makes me feel like shit, not so much what the person did to me. Because I'm always like, damn it, like, I should have just been, like, tough and been like, what are you doing? I'm getting the fuck out of here. Or, like, you know, yeah, like, stood up for myself. But instead, I just, like, I reason with it and I go, yeah, okay, I can get through this. And then the next day when people are like, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you do anything? And I'm like, oh, you're so right. Like, I could have did something. But it's, it's a commonality that a, a lot of women who yeah. are assaulted or put in a position like that, they they aren't able to 
confront it or stand up for themselves like right in the moment. It's Ever. A, it's a, well, it, it, it's, I can't. I mean, but like, I feel like nowadays you wouldn't put up with that shit at all. But it happened at uh, work too, you know? So, I mean, yes, the song should exist. It is funny. It was a funny aspect of the night, but then the rest of the night was kind of weird. Maybe I could put that in the song. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then like fast forward to last year when I got hired at the Italian restaurant I'm at right now, it's my first week working there and that guy bit me, you know? And I told you about it. I froze on that one too. So it's like... It's like people at my work said, "Why didn't you just back like backhand him like instantly?" Well, wasn't it wasn't it known that he was like an ex convict? He or? yeah, he just got done telling me. So I'm it's my it's my like sixth day at the restaurant, and this guy who talks as fast as a crackhead because apparently he's on a bunch of stuff is telling me like, "Oh, I just got off probation for the last five years because I was locked up for three years." And I said, "Oh, geez." And I I said, "Oh, that sounds kind of serious." Like you obviously did something kind of like crazy. And he's like, well, yeah, I I kidnapped uh, a couple who owed my dealer drug money and I held them for like three days. And I was like, yeah. And I'm thinking like, why is this person telling me all this? And how did that person get hired at your job? How did he get hired? And the thing is, he's a good looking guy. Like he, not my type or anything, well, but I'm so just saying. So is that Aaron Hernandez guy. That's what I'm saying. He looks like like an Aaron Hernandez guy. Like good looking, like Hawaiian, maybe like Hispanic kind of a guy, you know, short, but like like in shape, like, you know, has like nice teeth, like a good smile, like clean cut. So they hired him based on like, oh, let's, you know, he looks good. Let's give him a sh- second chance, I guess. And then it's my first time meeting him and he's telling me he kidnapped people for drug money and went to jail for a couple of years and now his five year probation just ended and that he still sells um, human growth hormone. And like, if I ever know someone who needs it. And oh, I'm like, damn, we should hit him up because I'm thinking- We should have. I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking about taking some of that. <laughs> yeah. And definitely, because I'm 39 years old and, I, and I've, I've reached a point where uh, I'm not, my body isn't producing as much testosterone. So if, he, if, he's got a, if he's got a link to- You will take one injection and go bald immediately and like punch a hole in the wall and then we'll, I'll lose my deposit. <laughs> is that what you think is going to happen? Yes, I will yeah. lose my deposit. So I don't need to supplement test and lose my hair. Yeah, I mean, p- people who do test definitely lose their hair. Yeah. It happens like really quickly. It's true. So anyway, here's this guy. He tells me all this I'm shit. I'm just naturally balding. I haven't done steroids yet. <laughs> so here's this guy. He told me all this shit. Mm-hmm. And then I'm standing in his way of the computer screen. He puts his hands on my waist from behind me. And then growls and bites my shoulder at the same time. Oh, Jesus. And it was a very sexual growl. Yeah. And I was not turned on. I was more so like my heart like like skipped a beat. Yeah. And I felt like instant terror because I'm like, holy fuck, this guy is crazy as shit. He literally just like felt me up and like sexually growled in my ear and then bit me hard enough to where all I said was ow and like grabbed my arm. And he just went off somewhere, I don't even know where. And I was fucked up. The rest of the day, I was messing up orders. I was being weird. Yeah. And You were assaulted. Yeah, and I called you, and I said, something really weird happened today. And I almost didn't even know how to go about it. I was like, I don't even know what I should do. And you were just like, that's not okay. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And you reacting like that kind of even, like, justified it in my mind. Like, okay, yeah, this isn't okay. Like that no. was fucked up. No, and especially it's in the workplace. I mean, and you work at a corporate restaurant, so this is the thing. It's corporate as fuck. Yeah, if it's corporate as fuck, then there are it, there are things implemented to protect their employees from each other. Yeah, if they feel like that. So yeah, I mean, and so what happened next? So next is I called a couple more people because <laughs> you know I have like a big mouth and I have to tell everybody everything, and everyone was like, "No fucking way!" I called all my friends back in New York, and they're like. This would happen to you, Allie. Like, you've been back for, like, two weeks, and you're already getting assaulted at your new job. And they're like, yeah, fucking tell tell on him. And I'm like, well, I don't want him to lose his job. I'm, like, thinking, like... Who the fuck cares? I just want him to get rid... Because if he loses his job, then he's going to be out to get me. Well... You know what I mean? He's going to so, kill me. So what happened? So I go in early the next morning, and I tell who I didn't know was someone who's actually the HR. 
I just thought she was like a normal manager. And she like was like, this is not okay. I'm actually HR for this place. And the other woman was like, yeah, and I'm like the head manager. We're, we're going to have to let him go. Like he works today with you and we're going to we're gonna let him go. And I'm like, can you like just not tell him why? Can you just like make up something so like he doesn't kill me in the parking lot? Right. And they're like, we're going to have to tell him why. And I'm like, I just fucking killed myself. Like this is like this is I'm this is how I'm gonna get killed, really. Like I just survived New York and all the running around at two a.m. by myself in the subway, and I'm gonna get killed in Orange County, California. It's kind of sad. I know. Yeah. I was like, wow. So um, they fire him. We walk past each other. He says hi to me. I don't say anything, and they fired him on the spot. And he told one of the managers, "Tell Allie, I said I'm really sorry, and I didn't mean to make her feel like that." And I said, "All right, whatever. What can you do?" And then the next week, as I drove to work and parked, I would, I still to this day, I have not ever walked in through the front door. I always walk through the back. And um, I just would park in the back and I like check my surroundings. I'm checking all the cars, I'm looking at all the cars. Especially after work, I'm looking at all the cars. Cause I'm like, what if he's like waiting? Yeah. You know? What if he was waiting for me? Now yeah. I'm okay. Now I'm okay with it. But like, you know, it's been, you know, like almost a year. Yeah, but it's scary shit. But it's scary shit. Yeah. You know, like, Jesus. Fuck that guy. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. Piece of shit. Yeah. And I've worked at, in a lot of restaurants before, in a lot of food service, where there was flirting that was going on. Um, That's like harmless. And, yeah. And there yeah. was, but at yeah, the catering company too, there's a lot of, but it, you, you can tell when it's appropriate, you know? Like it was, uh, it seemed like playful when the, the two people communicating with each other we're kind of like both dishing it out mm -hmm. you know well just last month one of the girls who like works in takeout she told me that he bit him too or he bit her too yeah he's just a predator she was like i thought it was weird when he bit me she's like yeah she's like i didn't say anything about it she's like but i thought it was fucked up and i was like dude what so, so he gets a he's like brand new at a job and he's going around biting chicks yeah yeah fuck that guy yeah yeah you did the right thing i'm who, glad you said something people I don't know. I have no That's idea. That's crazy. I've never the, do that. But the more I watch this I Am A Killer and the more we are in Long Beach and there's people fucking like just launching their cars into the air, there's crazy fucking people everywhere. So there's we, crazy fucking people. Yeah. I mean. We just have to, you know, watch each other's back. And, you got to. And when you, when you roll up here at night, uh, you know, and I'm here, I just make sure that you get in here safely. And when I park my car, I definitely am looking both ways. I mean, but I've been doing that even when I was in fucking Fullerton, I was doing that because mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I don't know. When I get out of my van, I, I'm just like, all right, like someone could roll up on me this way, this way, or this way. And, it, it, you know, I've never had been put in a situation, knock on wood. These are wood. This is wood. My brain is wood. My boner <laughs> is not wood. Yeah, knock on that. Yeah, knock on. But, um. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't had to like defend myself or anything yet, but I'm definitely like ready for something fucking crazy to happen because I feel like a lot of crazy shit has has happened, um, you know, to me and a lot of people that I I know. But you just never know when it's gonna happen, and you got to try to not freeze when it does. But you know, when it does, when you do freeze, it's kind of like ugh, fucking annoying. Well, I mean, what you know? what would have been worse if you like assaulted him back? If or? I just like decked him in the face for like biting me? Yeah. That probably would have got us both fired maybe. Yeah, and he might have actually like Then like, he like would have had like a real thing against me. Or he could have like really hurt you True. even more. So I think you did the right thing. Like it was a fleeting moment yeah. and, and you just you did the next day you reported him and you got him the fuck out of there. Yeah. Um it's just you know, what do you do when you're in a situation when you feel like that and you feel victimized and you feel like someone's taking advantage of your kindness and you're taking it for weakness and you're assaulted and, and no I hate one, that. And no one believes you. Oh yeah. You know, or or they say, Oh well Can you may imagine? Maybe you shouldn't have dressed like that. I mean Yeah, it, yeah, with your uh, tie and your button up Oxford shirt. Well, it wouldn't apply in your <laughs> no, situation. I know. But but I'm just thinking about women in general. But could you imagine, yeah, like being her like, you know, assaulted no matter what level of assault happened, how minor or major, and then telling and then people not believing you. Yeah. That would be, and I know that happens all the time, and that is fucking crazy. Yeah, it's... um And really, like, sad. Yeah, it's a scary world, and it's not fair, and, um, well, I'm just glad that you feel safe at work. And, I do now, yeah. And I'm glad that... 
when you pull your car up here and there's an opossum, uh, is it an opossum or a possum? It's a opossum. If there's right. a possum staring at you, I'll grab my mace and I will like defend it. your honor. Thank you. Um, I'm not very tough, um, but I am kind of big. So yeah, I have that going for me. I mean, that possum looked like it was possessed by the devil. The dude at the yoga studio told me, he's like, he's like, yeah, you're a big guy, like saying that like no one's going to mess with you. And I'm just like thinking to myself, yeah. No one's going to mess with you? you yeah. Mean? Yeah. But that's the thing is like you could be a big guy and not be tough. Yeah. But if you're, if you're carrying a big 10 pound steel mace, like you can sort of look like you can fuck someone up. Yeah. But you don't want to lose grip of it and then have your own weapon used on you. Now, who's going to do that? I don't know. What if, like, you came at someone with a big mace and then you drop it and then all of a sudden they can hit you with the mace? I'm not going to drop it. You better not. No. Because that would suck. No, I'm going to hit them on the head with accurate... That would kill them. With accurate precision <laughs> and I'm going to cave their fucking skull in. Literally one hit with that thing would kill someone. It, it would decimate, decimate their face. It would decimate yeah. someone's skull. Yeah, we both use the word decimate because that's what it would. Just yeah. turn it into a fine sand. Yeah. It would just decimate you it. You died instantly. He <laughs> the next day he, he died instantly the, the following day. week no. <laughs> uh, well, so we, so in conclusion Long Beach is crazy people are crazy but we have each other peeve Aww. I know we wanted to end the first time I was your guest on the um, podcast by like making out but we didn't so this time I guess is our, like our redemption episode yeah this is our this is my chance to, to tell you that Allie <laughs> I am gay <laughs> And I've always been gay. Not again. I, I've been a gay man my entire life. Yeah. And all the times that we made love, I just put a football helmet on you and pretended like you were a tight end Aaron Hernandez. My, my mom asked. She's like, Neil's not gay, is he? <laughs> she she seriously did? Yeah, she did. Why would she ask? Because I've dated other people who have been questionable or okay. bi. Yeah? Yeah. So she's like, Neil's not gay, is he? And I was like, well. Well, he has some gay tendencies. No, I but... said, no, he's not gay. He's not gay. You know, but I don't think I don't think anyone is a hundred percent straight. Says the super gay guy. He says it told. It says <laughs> me, the questionable dude. No, I think even the straightest dudes, like I think if they were in a prison setting, they definitely could bang a guy in the ass. <laughs> I mean, yeah, or maybe blow a guy. Yeah, the whole ass banging thing is like very extreme. It's extreme and hot. Extremely hot. <laughs> it's very extremely <laughs> hot. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Thanks for having me as a guest on Subcast. Well, you're the co-host. Well, yeah. There's I guess a difference so. because you you are frequent frequenting the podcast. You know what I'm saying? So yes, exactly. Yeah. So th t like this episode was co-hosted by Ali Shula. Next time, instead of like when I'm back on. Instead of like talking about ourselves and our own experiences, can we just like shit talk celebs? That sounds so dumb. <laughs> I'm not into that. Come on. I don't give a fuck about celebrities. What if we do like a whole character thing? Like, what if we like dress ourselves like super goth and we like don't laugh at all and we just like shit talk celebs like in a really, really like goth like character? I think staying like, in think character. Like, think groundlings. Like, think improv. Staying in character for an hour sounds like a lot of work. That'd be really interesting. Exercise. I just like being me. Can I be goth next time? Then? Yeah, you'll just be like, I don't care about anything. I'm ready to die. Yeah. yeah. All of your fleeting emotions are pointless, Neil. And universally speaking, we are meaningless. You're meaningless. You're your, fe your feelings about your dad are meaningless. Yeah. Here, ask me a question. So, I'm going to try to answer back so like Allie, a goth how you girl. Feel, how are you feeling in a day? Um, same as I feel every day. Which is? Bored. Yeah. Tired. So what are you looking forward to next week? Um, what am I looking forward to next week? Well, me and my friends are getting together and we're going to go play the Ouija board in the cemetery. You're supposed to say nothing. <laughs> You're supposed to say nothing. Life is <laughs> meaningless. Goth important. people can be into like going to cemeteries. Oh, yeah. So goth people get excited. Like, I mean, I look forward yeah, to... I look forward to getting together with my friends and yeah. having a Ouija board in the cemetery. Yeah, I guess... They, <laughs> Maybe I guess, I'm like hot topic goth. I guess goth... Yeah, goth... Yeah, you're like fucking yeah. Hello Kitty goth. <laughs> yeah. Good times. That's hilarious. Well, I don't know. We should end this subcast. All what right. do you think? Yeah. Yeah, we have stuff Bye. we got to do today. I have to go get a 2,000 calorie Sunday. Yeah, you're going to get a Sunday. I might go do Bobby Wilson's yoga class. Okay. But I'm wearing these sunglasses. Yes, they're dumb, but they're functional. They cover my glasses, double glasses, hard. Yes, and look how really well functional. lit. Look how well lit our area is. I mean, we're doing. Your area is so well lit. Yeah, I mean, look at push, that. 
We're doing Shing. it. We're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Subcast number 24. This is the podcast by us. Yes. And I'm Ali Skulia. This is Ali Skulia. I'm Neil Peterson. Mm-hmm. And we are here bringing you the content every week. And once again, tour dates at dtbmusic.com, patreon.com backslash Neil P. Neil P. And make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, ring the bell, and do all that shit because it helps the algorithm. And if you know anything about algorithms, you know that like when you press buttons, it helps more people get this stuff in their feed, right? Yep, totally. Right. And I'm tired. Caffeine's wearing off. We're going to go. I... All right. I'll... <laughs> Come on. We did it. Okay. Yeah. We did it. That was, that was really good for you, huh? That was great for me. How was it for you? I was I froze the whole time. Yeah, I froze. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I just Full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Full circle. I was just frozen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will address this assault of Ali Shulan <laughs> in the next podcast. Yeah, when Neil is it on, was, I am a killer. It was like I consented to that kiss. I did. I did. Yeah. yeah I love you, Peeb. I love you too. All right. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sorry. I'm a caveman. It's okay. You're not just any caveman. You're you, my caveman. Aw. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Bang. Bye. Uh, I'm just freezing. I love you. I love you too. Bye. We did it. Oh, I can let all my farts out now. Oh, I just did it. Did you use fart right now? No, I just did it once. I had one fart the whole time. That was fun. <laughs>